Okay, this video is going to show you how to configure a USB controller for use with RetroPie 2.3, or more specifically RetroArch, um, which runs the emulators for Mega Drive, NES, SNES, and most of them with RetroPie. So if you log in to your Pi as normal using the shell interface, username Pi, password Raspberry, then when that logs in, we're going to just check the directory we're in, which is HomePi. And in HomePie, we are going to run the RetroPie setup as there's an interface to configure this for us. It makes it pretty straightforward. So I'm going to run that with sudo uh, full stop forward slash RetroPie underscore setup dot sh. Okay, I'm going to run that. And in this interface, we go to option number three setup. And then down here we've got an option register RetroArch controller and this will configure the USB controller for RetroArch emulations. So run that and it's going to say okay in the Pi it should only be the controller for that, it shouldn't be any other separate wireless ones or any other um, keyboard or, or other connections ideally but it's pretty intelligent and could probably work it out if you have got other things in there. Okay, so first thing it says is on your controller make sure there's nothing that's a bit um, out of default so no arrows already pressed down or there's no sort of angle on any of those buttons. Just press a few, release it up, make sure it's all centred. Okay, now that's done. When you press enter it will ask you to input up, down, left, right and the buttons you've got on your controller. The controller I'm using is a Retrolink one from Amazon. It's about six seven pound it looks like a SNES controller it's got the same sort of layout the same buttons um, it's got the select start and the two shoulder buttons as well and when we do run through this it will be pretty prompt asking you to press buttons otherwise it registers a timeout and it won't log the button press so you want to get ready to press the buttons it prompts for and you can see them as I run down here okay press enter right B button Y button and you can see as I'm pressing these buttons on the controller, start button, it registers how that identifies it. Down, left, right, A button, X button, L shoulder, R shoulder, right, I'm out of buttons now. That's all of the ones that I needed to press. Every time I pressed it I could see the number come up, so it's obviously registered it correctly. It's running through some other options on other USB controllers. You might have more Axia, more buttons to press and, and log but I don't need to do that so I just let it time out running through its options it's remembered all the ones it's going to need for me um, and then when this finishes what we'll do is just have a look at the file that it's created and we can edit it to add an escape option the escape option will be used when you're in the actual game rather than having to reboot the Raspberry Pi all the time to get back to emulation station you can press a combination of buttons on your pad and it'll escape back um, straight to the emulation station interface so you can quickly and easily play another game. Okay, so that one's finished and it says the configuration file has been saved as USP gamepad.cfg and will be used by RetroArch from now on. So this controller configuration won't be used by MAME or any other emulators, it's got to be RetroArch. Okay, now we're going to quit out of this, pressing cancel, and out of that, pressing cancel. Now we're going to go to the folder where it's written that file, which is cd apt forward slash, let's try that again, cd apt, and in there it's the RetroPie folder we want to go into, in there it's emulators, and blah, 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 blah. okay. Um, oh, I've got that wrong. Okay, emulators. There we go. And it's RetroArch that we were looking at, so we will change into that directory. In that directory, we've got the configs directory, which is where it saved the files. And you can see in here, uh, it's got a file called USB gamepad.cfg. And if we edit that, you can see that's the one we were just editing through that interface, sudo nano usb gamepad and here it's just logged all of those button presses so you could configure it again 
in here directly if you wanted or use that interface we used a moment ago. Now I'm going to add a couple of lines in here that will let me escape straight back to the emulation station interface. So first line is input underscore enable hotkey button equals 8. So this is going to say, actually I'll add the second line to make it a bit clearer. And the one after this is exit emulator button number 9. So in order for it to pay attention to that button 9, and you can see looking at the list, my button 9 is the start button. So to exit, it's going to say when I press the start button, exit, but only if I've pressed the hotkey first, which is number 8, and in my setup, number 8 is a select. So if I hold down select, press start, it should exit, um, but otherwise it should uh, just behave as normal and start would start the game. So these two lines are useful. Now your numbers will be different depending on what your select button maps to and what your start button maps to, but you can see whatever that is just above. And that is pretty much it to configure it in Emulation Station. So I'm going to write that file with Control A. It says what's the file name? I'll just press Enter. That's correct. X out of that uh, with Control X. And now if I was to run Emulation Station, your USB controller will be configured and recognized by RetroHatch.